and welcome to this e lecture my name is ayush kurg and i am a phd student at delft university of technology in netherlands now in this e lecture i will talk about a novel approach called gmi risk to estimate reservoir elastic parameters from surface seismic data and at the same time i will focus on the importance of explaining the multiple scattering which is present in the seismic data and how it can affect the reservoir parameter resolution if we do not account for it so siddharth sharma and eric varshu are my co-authors and they are also from delft university of technology so this will be the outline of from my presentation i start with the introduction and motivation behind this work then i give a brief overview of jmi ref and the different steps which are associated with it and then i will use a numerical example to explain jmi ref and also the importance of explaining internal multiples that are present in the data and finally i will end this presentation or this e lecture with conclusions so let me start by showing you some images of the cosmos so it's a very popular image of a cosmic event showing the formation of new stars and at the same time this another image shows the same cosmic event but if you look at the second image it has much higher resolution and you see a vast improvement in the image so you can wonder why you get such a vast improvement in the image so what happens is if you are at the earth surface observing the cosmos in that case you get an image whose resolution suffers from the scattering atmosphere which lies between you and the cosmos and as a result you get a low resolution image however over the years astronomers had sent their recording devices in this case telescopes above the scattering atmosphere and have avoided it by doing so they are able to get much higher resolution image of the cosmos now in the exploration seismic we want to find the potential oil and gas reservoir inside the earth's subsurface and for that we record the data over the earth's surface and in an ideal world we would only like to record the primaries or the first order scattering however we not just record primaries but we also record internal multiples which are higher order scattering and in a situation or in a situation where we have a complex overburden in that scenario we have overburden multiple scattering and transmission effects that interfere with your reservoir response and consequently it also interfere with the reservoir elastic parameter estimation unless we properly account for this overburden multiple scattering now like astronomers we cannot take our sources and receivers inside the earth surface and avoid this overburden or scattering overburden however we understand the physics of wave propagation so we can virtually create sources and receiver near the reservoir and we do that by redating the surface seismic data and by doing so we create a virtual source receiver response and we call this virtual source receiver response as local impulse responses however when you obtain this local impulse response you should always ensure you are correctly explaining the internal multiples and the transmission effects which are associated with your overburden and then when you have this local impulse responses then you go for target oriented full waveform inversion or av analysis to estimate the reservoir elastic parameters now based on this idea we proposed gmi this Now GMI this it stands for reservoir oriented joint migration inversion and it consists of basically three three main steps. Now the first step is estimating the up and down going one way wave field near your target area. And we do that using a process called joint migration inversion or GMI. In GMI we create wave field at all depth levels in the subsurface and the most importantly in jmi it accounts for all the multiple scattering which is present in your data such that you get the wave fields at your reservoir which are free of any artifacts 
due to unexplained internal multiples. Now, when we have this up and down going wave field at reservoir, then we apply multidimensional deconvolution to get the reservoir impulse responses or local impulse responses. And we call that process proximity transformation. And now we have a virtual source receiver data that we call local impulse responses. And finally, just to mention this whole process is what we call full wave field redatement because we are accounting for all orders of scattering. And after we have this local impulse responses, we can apply a localized target oriented full waveform inversion to estimate our elastic parameters. So this is what JMI this is in nutshell. So now let me talk about uh, in detail the, the major steps which form JMI this. So joint migration inversion. JMI or joint migration inversion, it's a full waveform type data fitting algorithm. So it explains the data sample by sample, and in this sense, it is similar to full wave field inversion. However, in JMI, we invert for reflectivity image and propagation velocity. So it kind of combining the migration with tomography. And most importantly, it accounts for all the multiple scattering and transmission effects that are present in your data. And we are able to do this due to its forward modeling algorithm, full wave field modeling, which parameterizes the data in terms of a scattering operator and a propagation operator. And by doing so, it's also able to decrease the non-linearity which is associated with seismic data. Now this flowchart depicts JMI and in JMI, we start with some initial guess of velocity model and reflectivity image. Then we simulate the data using full wave field modeling. And then using the data residual in a flip-flop manner, we invert our image and velocity model. Now, as we are modeling the wave fields in a subsurface, every time in each iteration, we have the elastic wave field available to us, which we can use as a byproduct for the other JMI this process. And in JMI, this reflectivity operator, it is not bounded by any forward model. As a result, it has an, the ability to go one step ahead of forward modeling algorithm in case of PP reflection data. And it explains the PP reflection data amplitudes based on the elastic nature without imposing the elastic wave equation. And the consequence of this kind of approach is we do not have to go full elastic for the whole subsurface. What we do, we create data using JMI based retatement at a reservoir level and then only apply elastic FWI at the reservoir level, which saves a lot of computations too. Now, finally, when we have up and down going wave field at our reservoir level, we can estimate the local impulse responses using multi-dimensional deconvolution. However, multi-dimensional deconvolution is, in this case, it's a very ill-posed problem. So we use an inversion-based multi-dimensional deconvolution along with sparsity and porosity constraint. And we call this whole process as proximity transformation. We use a process called fwi -Wiz to estimate the elastic parameters. It's a non-linear target-oriented inversion method. And it is also a full waveform type inversion method, which is based on scattering integral. And in FWIS, we invert for elastic parameters such as kappa, m, and rho, because these parameters are much closely related to hydrocarbon saturation and porosity in comparison to input impedances and velocities. Now, in order to compare the results or elastic parameters which we get in JMIS, what I'm going to do is, I'm also going to estimate the local impulse responses using standard redatement. In standard redatement, it's based on time reversal of surface seismic data. As a result, you don't account for any higher order scattering or internal multiples. And then I will use the impulse responses, which I get from standard redatement 
to apply the same local inversion as in JMRF to estimate the elastic parameters. And by this comparison, I will show that the elastic parameters and local impulse responses which we get in JMRF are of much higher resolution in comparison to standard redatement approach. And also to make this comparison fair, we will use the same velocity model which we estimate in JMI for a standard retreatment case. Okay, so this was all about the theoretical background for this E lecture. Let's move on to a numerical example. So for our numerical example, we use a subsurface model where our overburden comprises of high velocity and high density anomalies. And these anomalies create uh, uh, multiple scattering in the deeper section of our model. Then we create PP reflection data using elastic finite difference modeling for this model. And if you look at these three short gathers, you could see we don't just have PP reflection data, we also have converted waves. However, as in other process or in JMIRF, we are only concerned about PP reflection data. We are going to minimize or decrease the effect of converted waves by applying filtering in top e domain. At the same time, I want to zoom in to the reflections coming from deeper section. And if you look at the reflection coming from deeper section, they have a clear internal multiple imprint, which is caused by the overburden. And we would see as we process through this uh, progress through this numerical example, that if we don't account for this internal multiple, then this not only affect the estimation of local impulse responses, but elastic parameters too. So first I will estimate the local impulse responses for JMIRS. We start with a very simple initial model. So we use a very simple P-wave velocity model and a zero reflectivity image for JMI. And these are the estimated models which we get in our first step. So we get a, a very decent P-wave velocity model and estimated structural image. And also to quality check this estimated velocity model, what we do is we also generate image angle gathers for this uh, model. And we see that most of these uh, image gathers, they are flat, which indicate that we get a correct propagation velocity model. Now, these are the downgoing wave fields which we get in JMI and which we are going to use further in JMI this. So if you look at this downgoing wave field, you see it has extended coda, which indicates that in JMI, we are able to explain the multiple scattering which is present in the data, which now acts as an extended coda and it will also provide extra illumination in the target area. Now, this is the corresponding upgoing wave field which we get at our target level. And now we can use this down and upgoing wave field to estimate our local impulse responses using proximity transformation. Here in the top panel, I show the impulse responses in XT or short domain. And in the, in the, in the lower panel, I show it in top e domain. Now what I can do is, I can also estimate my impulse responses using standard retreatment. And this, these are the impulse responses which I get in standard retreatment. And to make a comparison with the proximity transformation, let's just focus on the, one of the reflection event. And if I flip flop between the two, you could see like in the standard retreatment case, there is a clear overburden internal multiple imprint lying directly above your reflection event. And we would see as we don't account for it in standard redatement, it affects our reservoir elastic parameter estimation in target oriented inversion. Okay, so now we have local impulse responses from JMIRF and from standard redatement. So we will apply the same local inversion to get elastic parameters. And for that, we are going to apply our uh, local inversion to the target domain, which I have shown in this uh, subsurface image. And moreover, I will only invert for kappa and m, because as it's known to have a stable density inversion, we also need PS data. 
Okay, so let's look at the local inversion result. So in this slide, I show the inverted elastic parameters that we get via JMIS. And in this slide, we show it what we get from standard retaining route. And if I flip flop between the two, you could see the high resolution elastic parameters that we get in JMIS case. And it's because of collect correctly accounting for internal multiple in the retaining part of JMIS. However, in standard retaining case, we see the resolution is quite low, especially for your inverted M. In that case, we are not able to demarcate the second interface. And this is the interface which corresponds to the reflection event that has an internal multiple directly overlying over it. And we could see the direct influence of that here. And to see this uh, difference more clearly, what we can do is we can look at our uh, inversion result at three locations, which I show here. And you see in the top panel, you see a very good inversion result for JMIS case. And especially for the second reflector or second boundary. In that case, we are able to get the clear demarcation of the boundary in JMIS case. However, in standard retainment case, we are not able to get it for M. And the reason being because our input data in standard retainment case has an internal multiple from overburden as an imprint, which affects our local inversion. So now we have reached to the end of this presentation. So let me conclude it. So in this e-lecture, we saw that the proposed JMISS approach provides the estimate of high resolution local reservoir elastic parameters from surface seismic data. And it's because of the correct handling of all orders of scattering in JMISS in the retaining part. At the same time, this kind of approach help us to avoid going for full elastic for the whole subsurface. Using JMISS, we only apply local FWI or local elastic FWI to the target area on the data which we get from JMISS. And lastly, we saw that the estimated local impulse responses and consequently reservoir elastic parameters, they are free of overburden imprint in JMISS case. And they are of, and they are of much higher resolution in comparison to standard redatement, courtesy of proper handling of internal multiples in JMIS. Now, I would like to thank the sponsors of the Delphi Consortium for the supporting our consortium uh, for over the years and for the funding my PhD. And also, thank you all for watching this video. For the more videos like this, please visit the EAG YouTube channel. Thank you.